I'm actually home and I know this might be a little weird. Let me try to turn my my um my screen my brightness up just a tad bit. Okay. Hopefully you guys can see me. So guys, I've been having a ton of issues with getting my YouTube live to work properly. So hopefully you guys can find me. Hopefully you guys have your notification alerts on. But I'm actually going to try one more time to see if I can actually put the um, video up because I'm not sure what's going on. I have a live that is scheduled and um, I tried to actually start from that live and it just won't work. So I am having to create a whole new live. Sorry, guys, trying to fix my hair. So I'm having to create a whole new live so that I can actually talk to you guys because it won't let me you know, like use the live that is scheduled. So I'm going to try one more time to actually use that live. If not, then unfortunately, this is just how you guys are going to have to talk to me, which is kind of sad because I know I have the thumbnail up and I know everybody's probably waiting on me to start the other live. So I'm going to try uh, uh, one more time to see if I can go back to that live. I'm probably going to do it on my on my um computer and to see because right now I'm actually on my phone so um hey I, I know I just saw someone down here in the chat box uh I just saw someone down here hey guys hey guys um welcome guys I'm having so much trouble with lives like I'm just kind of wondering what is going on I'm having so much trouble with lives it won't show, show my schedule live. I have a live that is actually showing that it's going on now. And then there's a live that is scheduled. So I'm trying to see if I can delete the one that is showing that it's scheduled so that you guys won't go to that live because that one's not going to actually work. So I'm, I'm changing that on my PC as we speak because I don't want you guys to go over there. It's not working. I've been trying it since 9 p.m. It's not working. So anyways, guys, welcome, welcome, welcome to my channel. This is Sheikah Bless. Um, hopefully, you guys can find me. I, I, I'm, I have a pet peeve. Like, if I schedule something for a set time, hey, a forward journey, if I schedule something for a set time, I completely have anxiety when I'm not able to do it. Like, it really wrecks my nerves. So this whole time, I'm sitting here like, maybe I should cancel this or something because I just don't want to... Um, set something up. Hey, Miss Brown, I just don't want to set it and then have everybody waiting on one side and then I can't find everybody else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and actually um, change that one so that you guys don't, you know, I like go over there and try to watch it because it's not going to be there. I'm going to be here. So um, I'm going to do my intro in just a second. I'm just going to make sure I disable that other live so that you guys don't get lost in translation. And then we can chat tonight because I have a lot of information. Like I have just some things I want to talk to you guys about. And this is going to be based on my own, based on my own um, observation and also based on some of the questions that I've been receiving, even within our boot camp program, our notary business boot camp program. I hope you guys can see me. I'm home. I'm literally in bed. Like guys, this is just not me. You guys know that most of the time I'm like somewhere but I'm not in bed. But today, um, I actually came in from the office. We had a busy day today. Um, my partner and I, we had a lot going on today. Customers coming in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out, and just constantly. So um, just quick check, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to my channel. This is Sheikah Bless. Um, as you guys already know, if you're not yet a part of the family, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. As you guys are coming in, please Go ahead and hit that like button as well. Also, feel free to share um, share this video with family and friends or anyone that you feel that this information will be beneficial to. Um, we are all a family here. And to all my family members, all our subscribers, guys, welcome back. I am happy and excited to see you guys. All right. I know I have not been on a lot, but to be honest, guys, tax season is right around the corner. I have this thing on a little, I don't know what this thing is, and I'm so nervous that it's going to fall. But tax season is right around the corner and we have an order business bootcamp that's going on. We have training um, with our tax pros. 
We have notaries that we're mentoring. So there's just a lot going on in my world. So forgive me. Um, hopefully you guys can see me, you know, just fine and I'm not too dark. I'm On my side, it looks dark. So I'm going to try to brighten it up just a little bit. See if that helps. Yeah, that helps a little. Anyways, guys, so tonight I want to talk to you guys about this hustler versus, you know, CEO mentality that we need to kind of get rid of. Some of us need to get rid of it. Let me make sure this camera is not going to fall. So one sec, guys. You see my, my ceiling fan or something crazy in my house? It's okay. Don't worry. There's nothing creepy or scary in here. It's just normal stuff. <laughs> so anyways, guys, yeah. So based on my observation, I'm just getting a lot of questions from people. And it seems like a lot of, because I'm not sure if it's because of what you guys are watching on YouTube, what you guys are hearing, um, the information that you're getting. A lot of people seem to be in this hustler mode. Like they're just wanting to get information so that they can actually, you know, just make money real quick. And I wanted to kind of talk about that just a little bit. I've been wanting to talk about it for over a week now because the questions I get is kind of like, hey, so what do I do? Um, how do I make money as, you know, how do I get this started? And how do I do this? And how do I do that? To be quite honest with you guys, you have a choice as to how you want to do this. If you want to run a legitimate business, you have to invest time and you have to invest money and you also have to be patient and allow yourself to grow. You cannot just walk in the door and expect that you're going to kick the door wide open. You're going to start making thousands or millions and nothing else is going to, you know, everything is just going to change. If that is the case, Everyone who's a notary would be a millionaire right now. Everyone who's a signing agent would be a millionaire right now. So I'm going to talk to you guys about the difference between being a CEO and actually being a hustler. So being a hustler, you're basically kind of like focused on fast money, right? You want to make money quickly. You also end up um, with no long-term goals. You, you don't have long-term long -term goal because you're just trying to get the money now. You're living in the now, in the today, in this minute, in the second. I hate that this thing keeps moving. It's almost like it's giving me, I don't know what's going on here. Okay, let's keep it this way and see if we can keep stopping from moving. Guys, it's so not me, so off, right? So yeah, you work more, right? And you get less. You don't have longevity because you're hustling. So it's not going to be like, okay, I'm going to be doing this forever. I'm going to do this to retire. You're also um, not building a legacy for yourself. You're not building a brand. You're not establishing any kind of, you know, like status as far as like in the, in the work, in the work industry, you're working for someone else. You may be working for yourself, but only on a part-time basis. And it's just not, it doesn't, it just, it's not fulfilling. So as a hustler, you're just thinking like, hey, I can just do this. You might take on multiple things. You might decide that, hey, I can do um, I can do Uber and Lyft and this and that and DoorDash. And it's okay to have a hustle. You know, the hustler mentality is not a bad thing. It's just the fact that some people are dependent solely on hustling. And to be quite honest with you, it's not, it's not, it's not very good. You will get burnt out. You'll get burnt out very, very quickly. And you'll realize that, hey, you just feel like giving up. That is what a lot of people end up doing. They end up starting off saying, hey, I want to do I want to do loan signings. You know, I want to make 50K um, every two months or three months or whatever. Well, let's do some math. So if you decide that you're going to be a loan signing agent and say you're not working directly with title companies, or with escrow companies, say you're working with loan signing companies, right? Um, the loan signing service is going to give you jobs ranging anywhere between, I would say, uh, 65 to maybe 150, or maybe even uh, 190 in some areas. But normally, the signing service, the pay that you receive from them is a lot less than what you would receive if you were actually working directly with a title company or escrow company, right? So you're actually doing more for less, right? But because you're a hustling, you're not thinking about, okay, well, long-term, you know, I want to do this, or long-term, I want to do that. You're just thinking, okay, I want to make this money and I need to go get up and go, right? 
So you're, and I started off doing the loan signings as well. So I, I'm not, but in any way, like saying, hey, don't do loan signings or it's bad for you or anything like that. What I'm saying is be smart about what you're doing. If you're going to be hustling just to get a kickstart, like, hey, I'm going to hustle right now so that in the next few months I can start my own business. I can register my LLC. I can, you know, build my, get my website done. I can get my logo done. I can, you know, start doing things a lot differently. That's fine. But if you're just going to be hustling and hustling and hustling and you think that it is just that, that's it, you're just going to make money that way. You're going to get burnt out. I'm here to tell you the honest truth. You will get burnt out. Now, I've been a loan signing agent since 2016. This is almost 2021. So um, the first few months of loan signing for me was exciting because I it was full time for me. I wasn't doing it part time. So it was exciting for me to know that, hey, I can go out and do these signings. But to be quite honest with you, the wait for me to get paid was a little like at first I, I almost it's like I stuck my own foot in my mouth because I was thinking, oh, my gosh, yes, I got like five assignments today. I have 10, 10 for this week or I have 15 or whatever. And it was all good. Right. Then I had to wait between 30 to 45 days before I collected my first check. Now, given this is about four or five years ago, so it's probably different now. A lot of companies now they pay on the 15th, like they pay twice a month. Um, but majority of loan signing uh, services that you'll sign up for, because that's what I was doing in the beginning. I wasn't working directly with any title or, or escrow companies. I was just basically um, working with loan signing services, right? So I just got very tired, very, very, very tired. I got tired, like after about four months, after four months, I did earn. And like I said, I was getting assignments very easy. And I felt like, okay, this is enough. This is good for me. But let me give you guys a typical day or a typical uh, routine of how loan signing will work. You'll get an email or a text message that will give you an offer for loan signing, right? The email or text message in will tell you how much, you know, what, how much the, the signing is, you know, what the offer is, how much you're going to get paid and where you have to go and whether or not you have to scan or fax back the documents after you take them to get them notarized, right? Hey, Shayna. So what you do is you get the email, you reply. And if you reply in time, because normally the email goes out to a lot of notaries and notary signing agents. It's not just one person. So if you get it, sometimes you'll respond, you know, five, 10 minutes later, you realize it says it's already assigned. That's because they send it to a pool of notaries. So you pretty much have to be on point. Like you literally, as soon as you get that text, you have to, you have to accept it. As soon as you get the email, you have to respond. Like if you are slow with responding, you will realize that by the time you get to it, the assignment is gone. It's gone. Someone else has took it, took it, right? So for me, I was just kind of like, oh my gosh, this is, uh, it, it, it was exciting to know that I was getting them. I was going. So let me go ahead and, and let me tell you guys again before I go off track. So you get the text message or email, you accept the order, Right. You accept the order. If it's a same day assignment, then what you have to do is basically wait for them to send you the loan documents by email, or you have to log into whatever sign, signing service it is, and then basically print print the documents from their dashboard, or you print the documents from your email. When you print the documents, you're printing two sets. So say, for example, you get a, a loan signing package, like, for example, a, a refinance. Refinance package, packages are very large. They can go upwards of 150 to 200 pages. Um, when you print, you have to print double that. So one ream of paper is about 500 sheets, right? So one refinance packet can take you to almost 90% of one ream of paper. That's that one ream you buy for like $5. That stock that you buy for like five, 10 bucks at most maybe. So one loan signing is going to cost you almost an entire ream of paper, right? So be prepared for that. You're going to be printing between 150 to, to four or 500 pages. When you print that off, you basically have to, normally once you get the order, you have to call the customer to confirm. So you have to call the customer to confirm, hey, you know, well, not hey, but you call them, this is so-and-so, 
I'm um, I'm con contacting you on behalf of your your title or escrow company. Um, I have a, a signing that is scheduled for you for X day at X time. Just wanted to confirm that this is still okay for you. If they say yes, then it's time for you to go ahead and confirm. Normally, you have to confirm it on whoever sent you. You have to confirm it with them that you've contacted the customer. Most companies ask you to, to confirm that you've spoke to the customer and everything is good, right? So anyways, you print off two copies of the, the, the package. Now, God forbid you, you get the loan signing documents late. And that happens a lot. There's times when you're sitting there, the closing is at 2, 2 p.m. That means you have to get to the customer um, I normally say get to the customer before like 10 minutes before the closing. So if the closing is at 2 p.m., you need to get there by at least 1.50, right? So if you get to the closing at 1, you're supposed to be at the closing at 2. Sometimes they send you the loan documents at 1.30 and the customer might be 45 minutes away and you're like, oh my God, I'm definitely not going to make it on time. And you cannot leave without having the documents. Now, a lot of people are saying, like, I used to do this. I used to carry a printer in the back of my SUV. The problem is that the printer that I was taking was a um, desk jet, desk jet or office jet. So those printers, they use ink very fast, like super fast. You probably will print one loan packet and that's it. You need a new ink. I'm being honest with you guys, like... You print one, that's it. So I'm telling you guys from out the gate, do not get a regular desk jet or office jet printer if you're a loan signing agent. Just don't do it to yourself. Your pocket will hurt for a while. Anyways, so if you get the document late, you're going to basically kind of, you don't have time to sit and review. If you get it if you get it early, like the day before, a couple hours before, you have time to go through the packet, organize it, put your little notary flags on. Okay, so you know what pages need to be notarized and where the customer needs to sign. But if you get it late, you pretty much have no choice but to just, you have, you're going to have to just wing it. You're going to have to deal with what you have to deal with and just go to the customer. You can't say to the customer, hey, um, I am coming, but I don't have the documents. Some people used to print it in their car. But like I said, I have SUV and I had a desk set printer. So I can't print 500 pages in the back of my vehicle. It was just impossible. Now, if you have a nice, you know, set up in your car, your mobile like that, and you have a laser printer in the back of your car, kudos to you. Most of those types of printers, they take high power. They take a lot of power. So even though you might have an electric socket in your car, the voltage might not be enough for you to take a laser printer. So the, this is why I'm telling you guys, hustling is it's like you have to plan for business. You have to be prepared for all of these things because it's going to affect you in the long run and i'm being honest with you guys because a lot of people feel like okay i just want to know what loan signing companies are going to sign up for okay so anyways let's get back to what i'm saying you print the documents off if you get them on time you have time to go through it sort through it, put your put your little flags on notarize this notarize that then you head to the customer you get to the customer you go through the entire loan packet with the customer and then you have to head back to your office and scan everything that was that you have in that packet back. Now, some companies are really nice and they say just scan the pages that need the pages that you notarized. And they only want to see whether or not the notarization was done correctly. If it's done correctly, then they will give you the go ahead to drop the packet off. Say, for example, you scan because you, you can't just mail it. Now, some companies will say no scan backs, no fax back, which is awesome. That means as soon as the customer signs the documents, you can just go straight to FedEx or whoever and drop it off. But if the customer says, if they, if the company says, hey, we want scan back, you can't drop it off until they tell you that it's okay for you to drop it off. So sometimes you're just like, oh my God, you're stuck between two signings because you have a loan packet that needs to, um, you have a signing that you need to get to, but then you haven't received a response from the one that you did before that you told the signing company that you that you scanned it back to are you guys following me so far because i know it sounds like a lot um this is just so weird for me guys i'm just like oh my gosh i can't feel but i'm going to do it because i it's been a long time since i've been on and i definitely want to talk to you guys so anyways so the loan signing company um you have to wait for them to give you the okay to go and drop the the package off 
So after you drop, you know, after they give you the okay, then you have to go back and make sure you meet that FedEx time, the, the last pickup time so that package can get overnighted back to whoever it needs to get to. Um, if you miss that drop time, the package is going to sit there for a whole nother day until the next pickup time. So trust me, sometimes it does get stressful, okay? You have to be very well organized. You have to pay attention to detail and you have to manage your time wisely. So if you say, I want to be a hustler, I want to do multiple things. I want to be doing uh, Uber. I want to be doing Lyft. I want to be a signing agent. I want to sell stuff. I want to do this. I want to do that. I can tell you right now, if you want to be a full-time notary signing agent, it's almost impossible for you to do other things because you're going to be on the go 24 hours a day. That's if you're a 24-hour service. I'm 24 hours. Like our offices are all 24 hours. So um, you're going to drop the packet off to FedEx and that's it, right? So the process again is you get an offer, you accept it, you print the documents, and then you take it to the customer. Before you even go to the customer, you have to call them to confirm the appointment. You um, get the documents uh, completed. You go back home or to your office, get the documents um, scanned, send it to the signing company, wait for them to give you the okay to take it to FedEx and drop it off. Then you take it to FedEx and drop it off. Now, imagine, do imagine what I just said to you just now. Imagine doing this five, six, seven times for the day. Some people are doing upwards of 10 per day, which is, I'm like, wow. It's not that it's not doable. It's not that you cannot be successful at it. It's that your mindset has to change. You have to be committed. You have to have a CEO mentality. If you're in hustler mode and you're just like, oh my God, I need to get this done quick so I can move on to the next person and you make a mistake, more than likely you're going to have to go back and fix your own mistake. So you have to go back. So if you miss something, you missed a signature, you didn't notarize something, you put something in the wrong place, you're going to have to go back and do it all over again. Imagine not having the right mindset and having to deal with things like that. So I want you guys to understand that when I say you have to change your mindset, do you want to do a hustle or do you want to be a CEO? So again, I was doing the hustle thing in the beginning because I felt like in order for me to make money as a signing agent, I needed to go hard and I needed to, needed to go hard full time and to be sure that I can make enough money to where I don't need to clock in and work for anyone else. That was my goal. And that is the reason why I decided, hey, I'm going to hustle at the time. Now, I hustled for about three months. Three months is all it took for me to say, this is not the life for me. Three months is all it took for me to say, I cannot live like this. I cannot drive all over the city like this. I can't be printing paper like this. And to be quite honest, the first month that you start, just understand that you may not have any checks coming in um, for at least 15 to 45 days from the companies that you're working with to get signing, signing jobs. So for 15 to 45 days, you're going to have to be buying all that paper. You're going to have to pay for the gas. You're going to have to pay for any other cost that, that is associated with you operating as a notary signing agent, a loan signing agent. So I want to be honest with you guys. And the reason I want to tell you guys this is because I get too many calls where people are just like, just tell me where to sign up with, tell me where to go, tell me this, tell me that. I promise you, if you don't have a steady head, if you don't have a, a plan, if you do not pace yourself, you will get burnt out very fast. God forbid you don't have a reliable vehicle because if your vehicle is not reliable, you might end up having to Uber to the customer's house. And that is just like, I don't wish that on anybody, <laughs> to be honest. Or you'll have to, at last minute, cancel the signing. But then think about it. If you already printed like 400 sheets of, of paper, now you have to cancel. You're wasting a, almost a whole ream. So you're going to want to complete that signing. You're going to be like, listen, I need to complete this signing because I, I just printed a whole stack of paper. Like, I'm going to lose. Guys, now, CEOs. We have long-term uh, flex. We have long-term financial um, stability. We have goals. 
We want to leave a legacy. We want to build a brand. We want a good business structure. We want to make sure our business is constantly growing. We want to make sure we have a clear path to success. We also want to talk about general wealth. You know, like, you know, we're not just stuck in, okay, we just want to get food for today. We want to make sure that when we're making a profit, we're stacking our chips. That means you're setting money aside or you're reinvesting investing into your business so that your business can grow. I started off as a mobile notary with no physical address. I was not going to take customers at my house. It wasn't going to happen. No physical address. But yet I would go out and do mobile notary work. I would go out and do loan signing work. And I would still get calls and I would still do everything. So for about three months, yes, I was hustling. Yes, I was that signing agent that was printing stuff. I went to a pawn shop and bought a laser printer because I could not afford to buy ink for the desk jet printer. So I went to the pawn shop and bought a laser printer. And that laser printer was the, I think I, I matter of fact, I still have that printer to this day. I still have that printer to this day. All I do is change toner and I change toner about every month and a half when I was doing loan signings. Now, let me tell you guys how I switched from running around, taking three, five, six loan signings in a day, going crazy. Let me give you guys some simple math, right? Say you're a regular notary, just a general notary public, right? And you have... Um, like, for, for example, for me in the state of Florida, I can do VIN number verifications, I can marry couples, um, and the state of Florida, the maximum fee the notaries can charge for notarial acts is $10, right? So say, for example, I do my wedding, say, say I have my weddings that I'm doing, and I offer like a package um, for a wedding that's going to be, say, somewhere between $200 and $350 for each ceremony. If I position myself correctly or advertise myself correctly, I can do anywhere between five to, well, I would say five to seven in, in a week, right? So that is five to seven times 200 or $350, five to seven times that. So I don't know if you guys have a calculator, calculate that for me because we want to work smarter, not harder. Hustlers work very hard for a lot less. This is what I teach people. I teach in my boot camp, in our notary business boot camp, people that uh, we mentor, anyone that we talk to about this business, we tell them, you don't want to be focusing on working too hard. You want to work smart. You want to go after everything as a notary. Anyone can be a client, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. Anyone can be a client. While you're going crazy chasing a signing agent job, not to say you should not, because trust me, signing loan signings can really kick things into gear for you. I would say to take on a bulk of loan signings is you can do that. The money is there, right? If the question is, am I going to make money? Can I make money as a loan signing agent? Absolutely. But you have to understand that it's a it's it's a constant moving. Um, process. You, the minute you slow down on loan signings, you will see your income decrease drastically. So you have to have a backup plan. You have to have a plan B. You have to focus on general notary work. You're a notary public. People get things notarized every day. A lot of people don't pay attention to that. They invest time and effort in loan signings and then they get tired, they get burnt out and little do you know, the business just disappear. It wasn't even a business in the beginning because most people don't even take the time to establish a LLC or to build a brand or do anything at all. They just go do the signings, get the check, and that's it. You have to get out of that mentality. It's not going to help you. Now, hustling in general is it's good to if if you know how to hustle, it's a good quality. Like, I'm not saying you shouldn't know how to hustle, right? But I want you to understand that use that as a drive to move on to the next level. Don't get stuck into, oh, I hear I can do this for $2. Oh, I hear I can do this for $10. Oh, by the way, we can do this too for this amount of money. And then at the end of the day, you don't have anything to show for it. You have zero assets. You don't have a brand. You don't have a business. You don't have a legacy. You're only, you're working inside someone else's dream. So if that person decides, you know what, I don't know, I no longer need you. You are out of commission. You're out of service. You're done. You have to move on to something else. 
So I want you guys to get into the mentality of, listen, I am a CEO in the making. I may have to hustle to get to where I need to be. You know, as far as like, okay, I need to kick it. Kick, I need a boost financially. So I want to start my notary business. Right now, I don't have a lot of money. So what I want to do is I want to kick in the loan signing and I want to knock out at least 20 to 30 of those a month, right? 20 or 30 of those at two, you know, 150, 250 each is a good sum of money. Put that money aside when you get paid. Now start focusing on, okay, I need to establish my business, my foundation for my business. I need to establish my own brand. And I need to offer additional services. I cannot just sit here and do loan signings, do loan signings until I'm tired. I get calls from people all the time and they say, Sheeta, I don't want to do this. I'm so stuck. I don't know what to do. Another thing is people start making money fast and then they start living above their, their normal means. You know, they're making the money and it comes fast and leaves fast as well. They don't have any investments. They don't have savings. They don't have any plan for the future whatsoever. When it comes to like, for example, right now in the middle of a pandemic, notaries are essential workers. You're still needed. People have to get documents notarized. Everyone that's sitting working from home, majority of them have to get I-9s completed because they have to verify eligibility to work in the country. There is so much that you guys are missing. I can make the same amount doing notary work rather than doing loan, um, notary signing agent work. I can do a mixture of the two and be very stable and be very good and be very cool and not get stressed out. A lot of people say, how do you, how do you run a business 24 hours a day? Oh, it's quite simple and easy. I don't have customers walking in the door 24 hours a day. The business is open 24 hours a day, but trust and believe, I sleep. I do sleep. Customers are not calling 24 hours a day. And even if they do, my partner and I, we, 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 we cover each other. So we have a system in place where we know that we, are, we have a path to success. We know that, okay, if a customer calls this time and they need you know, this service, we know this person will do it or that person will do it, or we will schedule this, we'll schedule that. We make it work because you have to sit, you have to plan, you have to strategize, you have to learn about the ins and outs of being a CEO. Hustling, if you send me a message, say, hey, what companies can I sign up to get loan signing jobs? Even if I told you a few months from now, you're going to say, I'm tired. I have to drive two to 300 miles a day. And when people tell me they drive two to 300 miles a day, they don't, they don't mean they're taking long trips. They're taking short trips back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So the, your vehicle that you have is taking on a lot of miles, a lot of miles. Me personally, what I recommend to anyone is a good blend, a good balance. General notary work, notary signing agent work. Hustling and doing all this and you're, you're going and you're going. Yes, the money is going to be there. If you're young and, you know, you just want to make money, you don't want to build on anything, it's just a side gig for you, that is okay. That is not a problem. But I would love for those of you who want to get out, get out of the nine to five, who want to get out of clocking in every day, who want to get out of asking permission to take a vacation, who wants to get out of asking permission to take time off, who wants to get out of, hey, you cannot take time off of work, I don't care if your child is sick. You need to come to work. You already have five absences. If you get one more, we're going to write you up. If you want to get out of that kind of lifestyle and you want to build something for yourself, you want to build a legitimate business that you yourself can turn around and employ somebody else to go clock in. Okay? You employ someone else to clock in for you, to talk to customers, to deal with everything, and then you can go home and rest. You don't want to be the person that is constantly just every day you call, I, you're, you're speeding. Right now we're in the midst of a pandemic and a lot of people can't even get a day off of work because they're considered essential. Actually today, one of my clients told me that there were some people that were told that if they did not show up for work, that they would be fired. They don't have a work to come back. They don't have a job to come back to. 
even though the situation was that they felt unsafe going to work. They weren't providing the proper gear for them to protect themselves. They're not providing an environment. They were working in the food industry and they, they're allowing a lot of people to come in. Some people are not wearing masks. And as you guys know, when you're eating, you can't eat with a mask on. And so a lot of people are scared and they're terrified about going to work. And so they were told, hey, if you don't show up, don't come back. Like, we don't care what's going on with you. We don't care if you feel like there's not enough protection. We don't care if you feel like you're tired. We don't care. We don't care. If you catch COVID, we don't care. That's the, some, some people are actually experiencing that right now. The other thing that really touched my spirit the other day that I noticed a lot of people are going through as well is that some people are not getting sick themselves, but they're dealing with family members that are sick. Also, a lot of people are have their, have their kids homeschooling and then they have to get up and get out of their beds and leave home. And leave the children at home to homeschool. It's just, it's, it's just the type of thing that really makes you think like, hey, you know what? This is probably my year. This is probably my time for me to start doing something for myself, by myself, and figure out how I'm going to establish a legitimate business. Start with a hustle if you have to. Right now, I understand times are hard. A lot of people don't have a lot of money. You know, things are, you know, you're not going to be handed anything on a platter. So start small if you have to. I started like that. Like I said, I started off doing the mobile notary. I started off doing the loan signings and everything like that. I didn't have an office. That's why I was mobile. And then as soon as I started getting a little traction, as soon as I felt like, okay, I, I have a little bit of st stability right now, I'm going to shoot for getting a building. I need an office. I don't want to keep driving all over town all day long. I don't want to do that. So I need an office space. I need the customers to come to me so I can sit in one spot all day long and, and earn money. As soon as I got to that level where I had my office, it was like everything changed for me. Opportunities started coming. A lot of people was acknowledging and recognizing my business. And when people came, they were like, oh, my gosh, this is, you run a legitimate business. And I said, yes. A lot of the opportunities to partner with local businesses and and um, healthcare facilities and things like that came from the fact that I was actually stable and they realized that I'm a legitimate business owner. I'm not just a person that's just gonna, you know, show up every now and then. They know this is re reliable, they're professional, you know, and they feel like they would not be making a bad choice by referring their patients or their clients to us. So a lot of my opportunities came from me moving away from mobile notary. I still do mobile notary, by the way, but I don't do it 100%. But a lot of it came from me switching from mobile notary into now I have an office space. And a lot of customers are out there. They're just looking for somewhere to go to get things notarized. A lot of people don't want to go to the bank and stand in line and wait for hours. They want to just get it done, especially right now. No one wants to be standing then some, some banks are saying you need to make an appointment. No one has time for that. Sometimes they don't even need, need, know that they, they need to have stuff notarized. For our office in, in North Carolina, people are selling vehicles every day. They're selling their cars. They're selling motorcycles, whatever. And the title needs to be notarized. You don't know when that sale is going to come. You don't know if someone's going to buy the car, call you at 10 p.m. and say, hey, I want to pick up this car tonight. And then you're going to like, oh, my God, I need to notarize the title to give it to them. You need to find a notary. I'm telling you guys, you, there is so much emphasis. And I see a lot of people asking about loan signing. Yes, ask, I will answer that question for you tonight. Guaranteed, there is money in the loan signing industry. Yes, you can make thousands as a notary signing agent or loan signing agent. However... If you do not have the right mindset, you will find yourself burnt out. You will get tired. You will get frustrated. You will feel like you're just a hamster in a wheel going in circles. Once you start getting some traction, getting some money, and you realize, hey, I have a little set aside, move yourself from that mobile notary and that hustler mentality over to CEO. Get an office location. Start mapping out how you want, what services, what products you want to offer. Start, start basically planning and designing a path to success. 
What are some of the things you want to, to do? Set goals, weekly goals, daily goals, service goals, and then market yourself. Always market yourself. No business is just open and people are arriving. Not even McDonald's and Burger King that we go to all the time. The reason we go there is because 90% when we're sit 90% of the time we're sitting home watching TV and boom, there's a commercial with some nice, juicy, fresh fries that looks like they got good salt on it. <laughs> and you're like, man, I should probably go get McDonald's. Or they advertise something. You don't know because it's, it's hitting you subconsciously. You're not even thinking about it. It's almost like it's programmed in you. Don't think that these other big companies are just not marketing to anybody. They market to you every day. Every time you pick up your phone, every time you turn on the TV, every time you go on the internet to surf, there's an ad. There's a commercial. Those are the things that drive people. You might not be interested in any of the things you see. Maybe food is not your thing, but maybe you've been thinking about getting a new car and you know, those commercials will come on zero down, get this, get a rebate, get that. And you're like, well, wait a minute, what are you doing? Next thing you know, you're buying a car. Don't think that other pit businesses are just successful because they just open and customers just appear. No, you have to market every single chance that you get. You never, ever stop. You will realize that as an entrepreneur, you become a marketing expert involuntarily. You realize that conversations will not end without you saying, by the way, I'm a notary. So if you're ever in need of notary services, here's my card. Please give me a call. I operate 24 hours a day and we also do mobile service. We can come to you. You will realize it comes like second nature. It, any great conversation. Someone could say, oh, I like your hair. And you could say, oh, thank you so much. Do you live in this area? Yes, I do. Oh, okay, awesome. I'm actually a notary in the area. My office is right down here. So let me give you my card. If you ever need a notary or something, please feel free to call. That's me. That's me. All the time. When I'm out, when I'm talking to people, it's just, it's, it comes natural. So they don't feel like you're selling to them. But if you're calling people on the phone and say, hey, do you need something notarized? <laughs> it's going to be awkward. It's going to be odd. They're like, what? What are you talking about? No, you want to market yourself and you want people to take you seriously. So take your brand serious. Build on your brand. Take your business serious. Take time and invest into your business. If you don't have, you know, you might have a, a just social media, you may you may not have a website, you may may not you may not have an LLC, you may not have a business phone, you know, all the little things that businesses do. You may not have it or businesses function with or have or whatnot, however you want to put it. Work towards getting those things. Sorry, my heater just came on. It is so cold, guys. My heater just came on and now I'm like, I don't want to sneeze. I don't want to sneeze. Don't sneeze, don't sneeze. <laughs> but anyways, you guys follow what I'm saying. It is just, you have to switch gear. You're going to get tired. You're going to get frustrated. You're going to feel like, oh my gosh, I've done 200 signings this year. Yet, I don't have a, my own business. Like, literally, I don't have my own building. I don't have an office space. I don't have this. I don't have that. I don't, you're going to realize that, hey, if the company stopped calling you for loan signing jobs, you are out of work. You don't want that. If they stop, if for some reason the mortgage industry slows down, interest rates start spiking again, or people just decide, hey, I'm not going to make any move because I don't know what's going on with the economy, you realize that the loan signing jobs stop. It slows down drastically. Then what are you going to do? Because you are full-time getting jobs all the time and collecting thousands every month and everything was great. Now... Things are slowing down. What do you do? You're a notary public. General notary, notary work are, people are sleeping on general notary work every single day. They're sleeping on it. They feel like, oh, what is this $5 a, a, a signature? I don't have time for that. I could just do a loan signing for two or $300. Yes. But what you're not calculating is how, how many of those $5, you know, $5 signature jobs do you need to make up for this? And how often do you get them? How often does someone need to get something notarized? All day, every single day. 
children, adults, you know, everybody needs to have something notarized. People are working from home. Form I-9s, as I mentioned, are a hot ticket right now. You're working from home, remote no, remote work. They want to verify that you're eligible to work in the U.S. So they send you to go do a Form I-9. Same thing for fingerprinting. You know, people who are working in different industries now, they have to go and get background checks. They need to get fingerprints. They need to get fingerprinted. Guys, I want you to switch. You know, don't just get stuck on, hey, she could tell me where to go sign up. I'll tell you where to go sign up. But also what I want you to do is tell me what your plan is for yourself, for your business. Do you want to build a legacy? Do you want to build a brand? Do you want to have long-term financial stability? Are you just looking for something to pay a bill right now? Are you just looking for something to, you know, as a side gig or a side hustle? What exactly are you wanting to do? You're going to work harder for less. When you realize that, hey, I've done all of these things and I have nothing to show for it, that's when it's going to be a problem. You will start feeling useless. And that hamster in the wheel thing where you just keep running around in circles, running around in circles, running around in circles, running around in circles, it will tire you. It will tire you. If you get good at the job and you feel like, hey, listen, I'm doing great, like I'm doing awesome. Guess what? Maybe you have to start thinking about, okay, maybe I could hire somebody to do this and then I can do less and then I will have more time to do to invest in the business and, and building my brand. That's what I want you guys to do. So I went from mobile notary to notary signing agent. Well, I was actually a mobile notary and notary signing agent, but I was taking on a lot of signing agent work, like I said, every week because I was doing it full time. When I first started with mobile notary, I was doing it part time. But signing, every offer that came, I accepted because I heard that there was money in it and I wanted to prove that there was money in it. And yes, there is money in it. But be ready. Be ready to drive nonstop. Be ready to be scanning and faxing and printing and spending a lot of money on paper and toner and also putting a lot of mileage on your car. Not to say that you can't do it, but be ready for it. I know all the glitz and the glamour. People will tell you, oh, you can earn up to this. You can earn up to that. Absolutely. And you can do the same doing general notary work. You can, you can do the same by having a good balance of the two. You can do the same by building a strong foundation and establishing a legitimate business. When your business is legit, you can hire people and put them in places and let them do most of the work. And then you won't feel burnt out because you'll have time to do all the things you wanted to do when you had a job and couldn't do it. You can take vacation whenever you want to when you're the boss. But when you are the boss, not when you're a hustler, when you are the boss, that means you have enough money set aside where if you take two weeks off of work, it's not going to put a dent in your pocket it's not going to put you on the side of the, the curb because your, you know, your mortgage or your rent is, on, is not paid or someone's going to take your car because you didn't pay for your vehicle. You are the boss. That means you have everything under control. You have all, all your ducks in a row. You have your foundation that is strong and solid. You keep track of everything that is coming in and out of your business. You know exactly what to do. You, you're constantly learning. You're constantly pushing. You're constantly marketing yourself. And that's basically how bosses are. Yes, we don't get to go to every social event. Yes, we don't get to, you know, stay up and do this and do that and all kinds of madness. But it comes a point in your life where you have to make a choice. Do you want to just keep hustling or do you want to establish something that you can basically leave to your kids? If you have children, you want to establish a legacy. You want something you can leave behind. If you have young children right now and you establish a good business, right? Look at Amazon. Amazon started in 1994. And today, Amazon, the owner of Amazon, is one of the richest, if not the richest person, right, in this country. Started in his garage in 1994. In his garage. From his garage, now we are all on Amazon every day, addicted to buying things from Amazon. 
buying and then they you know amazon is branching off in so many different things amazon video amazon this amazon that amazon that kindle this that, that there's so many things from someone who started off in their garage in 1994 do things now that your future self will thank you for. Like, I'm so happy that I started my business in 2020 because now it's 2040 and my business is strong and booming. We have multiple locations. We have over 100 employees. We do this. We do that. We have. That is a story you want to tell yourself. That is how you want to see yourself. That is how you want to breathe. That's how you want. You keep that mentality and you don't let anything else change you, sway you from it. Don't just say, well, I, I just, you know, I, I just want to make some side money. If you want to, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with it. But if your end game is to get out of nine to five and get out, get out of, um, you know, clocking in and out and asking permission to go on vacation, asking permission to go take care of your family, asking permission to go take care of, take care of uh, business, even to take care of yourself. Guys, one of the most painful things for me is I have a special needs child. Well, two technically. And if, if you're a parent with kids with special needs, you know it is already difficult to deal with, you know, a child that requires more attention than the average child. Not a problem for me whatsoever to provide attention. The problem was always getting my jobs to understand that, hey, I have a child with special needs. They'll say, oh, go apply for FMLA. Okay, FMLA is going to give me X amount of hours every year to, to care for my child. And then after a while, it's unpaid, which means when I take time off, I can't pay my bills. I can't take care of my family. What is the point? So, guys, there's if you want to get out of that. Now, some people are okay with that. They're in good careers. You know, they're in good careers. Some of them our um, healthcare workers, which, by the way, thank you guys so much to all our healthcare professionals, anyone that is in the healthcare field. I don't care if you are the janitor that is cleaning the hospital. Thank you so much for your service. Thank you for putting yourself and your family on the line to take care of us, even though some of us are not doing what they should or could do to make things better and make it easier for all of us. We, I, me personally. I want to thank you for still showing up for work, even though it's difficult to deal with some of the trauma and some of the, the, the sadness and the pain and the things that you're seeing right now. I personally want to thank you for your service. I want to thank you. You guys are like superheroes right, right now. We're, I'm, I, that's all I can say. Thank you so much for showing up because you guys are going out in a time when other people are just kind of like, some people don't even want to leave home to go to the grocery store. So thank you so much to all the healthcare workers. Even if even if you're not a nurse, you're not a physician or whatever, even if you are the person that works in the hospital that checks people in, you're the security guard, you're the janitor, thank you so much for showing up and for taking care of us, even when we are not doing what we could or should be doing to help each other out. You guys are still showing up and doing what you can do for us. So I appreciate you guys. Thank you guys so much. And please stay safe. So anyways, I just had to get that out there because I think healthcare workers, anyone in the hospital, nursing home, assisted living facility, anyone that is taking care of other people right now, they're still showing up to work in the middle of a pandemic. Thank you guys so much for doing that. Personally, you guys are my superheroes. Anyways. So my video tonight, again, was to talk about how I went, how I transitioned from a hustler to a CEO. And how I did that was I hustled for a short period of time. Then I basically transitioned into from mobile service to getting my office to establishing a, a goal for my business, for setting weekly and daily goals, researching, learning about the different aspects of building a, a business and operating a business. Also learning about marketing. How do I get key customers coming in my door? How do I stay afloat? How do I make sure I'm making enough so that I can take care of myself, take care of my responsibilities and still have a profit left over from, from my business? So guys, that is how I transition. 
mobile notary for a few months, then general notary mixed with, with the notary signing agent, um, and then full-blown signing agent, and then a mixture. Well, now um, our office is mainly focused on general notary work. Every now and then we will do loan signings just so we can stay you know, on top of our game, but the main focus is general notary work, and it is often, it is less work, more structure, more stability, less stress, and it is awesome. It works for me. Now, there are some people that it, you know, they're okay with doing uh, loan signing, you know, 100% of the time um, that they're operating or in business, and that's okay. That is not a problem. If you can do that, if you are the person that likes to drive, you like to meet new people, you like to go out, you like to be on the go all the time, it is perfect for you. Can you make money? Yes. Will you make money? Yes. What you put in is what you receive. So if you are willing to go out and do these loan findings, you will get paid. That is definitely not an issue when it comes to that line of business. It is something that is kind of like Uber. If you go out and you drive around, you will get paid. <laughs> That's just how it works. If you go out and you do loan signings, you will get paid. All right, guys. So anyways, guys, if you are new to the channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. If you're not yet a subscriber, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I know tonight my whole um, plan to go live, like I had some trouble going live. And so I just decided, you know what, I'm going to try when I get, get home and I'm just sitting in my bedroom talking to you guys. Um, if you guys are, um, current subscribers, there is some information I'm, I'm going to be sharing in the next few weeks. I think you guys will really love, I'm too super, super excited about it. And I want to, um, I'm working on it as we speak because it will be very beneficial to everyone that is a notary that's on this channel. So, um, I'm a little excited about that. All right. So just Stay tuned. Make sure you turn on your notification alerts so you will know when I'm on. And that light you keep seeing is my laptop. It just keeps going off and on. I don't know, screensaver or something. Um, make sure you turn on your notification alerts so you will know what I'm talking about. And you're going to like it. I promise you guys will like it. Um, we also have reviews that are coming from members of our Notary Business Boot Camp. We have been super busy, by the way. Everybody's busy trying to get to work and get, get their business up and running. People are already getting calls. They just don't have time. So I did manage to catch up with um, two of our members this week. So I have their videos. I just have to go in and and um, and post them for you guys as soon as I get time so you guys can hear what they think about the boot camp, their experience so far, and um, what they've uh, been able to accomplish. And what, you know, just a little bit of insight on what the notary business boot camp is like. Um, I do have some some uh, subscribers that subscribe to the mentorship, and I did have the opportunity to do one-on-ones with a few of them already, and I have one-on-ones coming up with a few more people, which is awesome. Um, I love the fact that everyone comes in with an open mind and just such a great positive attitude. No one's actually coming in going, oh my gosh, what, I have to do this. Like Everyone's like, I'm ready, Shika, show me what to do. I want to do this boss thing. Let's go. And so that is awesome. Um, I am super duper impressed with some of the progress that I'm seeing so far. Um, people are just, you know, just really, really, really at the point. Most people are that they just want to do it. Elle says, when will there be another boot camp? Um, the notary business boot camp, there will be another one coming um, in the beginning of the year. I think in January or February, we actually already have a... Um, waiting list, <laughs> to be honest. So I will post information up on it. As soon as you guys see that information, like as soon as I post when um, we have like tax training or boot camp or anything else, please, please, please sign up. Sign up immediately because we can only take a limited amount of people. And that is because we don't want to bite off more than we can chew. Um, we only take a limited amount of people. So once we get to that number, and that number depends on our availability and what we can actually provide um, during that time. So once we say that we can take uh, we can take uh, mentees or, well, for mentorship, we're, we take people all the time because we schedule 
Um, we have a schedule that we come up with. And when we get to a number, which we will, <laughs> we're heading close. But right now it's okay. So we can still take people for mentorship. But anytime we advertise that we can take people where I personally mentor you, you will talk to me on Zoom. We will have video conference. We do demonstrations. We do a document training. A lot of people are exciting, uh, excited right now because we have document training that is starting on the 10th of December. So if you're not yet a member of our mentorship uh, program and you want to be a member, you want to learn about general notary documents or loan signing documents, this is the perfect time to sign up because we have uh, document training. We'll be going over 35 general notary documents. Yes, 35. And we'll also be tr teaching you on loan signing documents as well. So we have loan signing packages that we'll be going over with everyone. So right now everyone is on like, hey, let's get it. I'm ready. I want to see these documents because they want to ensure that they know what they're doing when they go out to do these loan signings. And we don't have any problems with that whatsoever. My partner and I work tirelessly to make sure that we give you guys the best information and we keep you up to date. We provide support for you when you're in the field, especially when it comes to um, making sure that you know what exactly you're doing. We don't want you making errors because making errors is just going to, it's not going to be good for your brand. It's not going to be good for your business. You can be the fastest loan signing agent, but if you're the one with the highest error rate, you, you have a lot of mistakes, you're not going to get a lot of business. So we want to make sure that you guys are heading in the right direction, that you're providing good quality service, and you know exactly what to do. So boot camp will be sometime in January or February. And um, right now, mentorship is open. So if you do want to sign up for mentorship, basic mentorship is $100 uh, enrollment fee and $11.99 per month. You can go to uh, sbntgroup.com slash mentor, or you can go to sbntgroup.com and just click on mentorship and you will see the different um, packages. If you click on start, you'll see the different packages. The ultimate mentorship is $199 for your enrollment fee and then $29.99 per month. So if you guys want to do either one, you're more than welcome to sign up. All right, guys. So I always have my 60-minute uh, timer going in the corner so I know uh, make sure that I'm not going over my hour um, so I don't miss anything as far as like um, you know like business work or anything like that so I'm over an hour but I cannot leave without asking you guys if you have any questions and for you to drop those questions in the chat box so I can go ahead and answer those for you so what questions do you guys have for me tonight um, any questions whatsoever and I can't see everyone in the chat box, but I know that there was some chat that I see that went by earlier because I'm on mobile tonight, but I can't see the question. So if you guys post a question, I can definitely see it. So any questions for me tonight, guys? Any question whatsoever? Question about notary, question about tax. By the way, tax season is slowly approaching. Well, not slowly. It's next month. So as of January 2nd, our office will be officially open to start um, preparing tax returns. The IRS will not open on January 2nd. So we are offering a fast cash advance where you can receive up to $6,000 of a cash advance um, based on eligibility and approval. It's not necessarily based on credit because some people are like, well, my credit's not that great. And I tell them, listen, it's not mainly on that. It's not like that. The bank determines your eligibility. Once you're eligible, we submit it to the bank. And um, majority of the times people do get approved. I've seen people with credit issues and all kinds of drama going on with credit and they still are able to get a loan. So our fast cash advance is available starting on January 2nd. If you're interested in that, you want us to prepare your tax return, we can take care of that for you. Go to sbntgroup.com or also kobecansolutions.com. That's our, our partner office. So you can go kobecansolutions.com or sbntgroup.com if you want us to um, help you with filing your tax return or if you want to get a fast cash advance starting on January 2nd. I know everyone is kind of strapped for cash right now, so take advantage. Alexander says, how you get the setup with the banks? Um, when you say set up with the banks, what exactly do you mean set up with the banks? Like a business bank account or... Give me a little bit of um, just a little bit more, tad bit more detail so I can answer that question for you. 
Oh, as a tax preparer, um, a tax preparer, you have to enroll. If you're an EFIN holder, then you can actually get a, you can partner with a bank. So I am actually partnered with two banks and I'm an EFIN holder. I've been an EFIN holder for quite some time now. So if you're an EFIN holder, you can go ahead and set up, get, get enrolled with a bank. Um, the two banks that I'm actually with now is TPG and uh, Refund Advantage. So what you'd have to do is submit an application. Um, hopefully you have a software provider. The software provider is normally able to help you to get set up with a bank. Or you can go to the website, refundadvantage.com or TPG, either one of them, TPG is Santa Barbara. And you can check to see if your software provider is one that they work with, but those are the two banks that I work with. I won't say I, because I like to say I, but it's actually we, it's my partner and I, so, so yeah. So that's how you get set up with a bank. You have to have an EFIN, and then you get, you're very welcome, you're very welcome. So that's how you get set up with a bank. And some banks um, do not require a lot of, like, um, experience, and some banks do. They want you to have your EFIN for quite some time or ha have some activity on your EFIN. Um, I applied for NNA back in October twice. I haven't heard from them. Is there another way to become a notary public? Um, applied for NNA. Um, Marlon says, is, is it hard to get set up with a notary in North Carolina? Um, no, <laughs> no. It's not hard to get set up as a notary in North Carolina, but someone else said that they, let me see that chat again, guys. One sec, let me go back. Okay, so this one said, uh, I applied for, I applied with NNA back in October twice. I haven't heard from them. Is there another way to apply to become a notary public? So when you apply, did you apply with your state? Um, because NNA is, you can apply with your state. You don't actually have to go through NNA. You can actually, um, just go to your state, um, depending on what state you're in, just look for their, um, how to become a notary for that state. There's actually a list. There was some list that I had, um, I'll post it. I'll probably post it after the live for you and just put a list on how to become a notary in that state, but you don't have to go through NNA. You can go through the state as well. So, like, for example, I'm in the state of Florida. For Florida, we um, go through the Florida Department of State or Secretary of State. Um, which one is it? I think it's Secretary of State. I don't even remember. But anyways, um, we go through, um, you can go through uh, Sunbiz and look up the, I think it's, one sec. I'll put a link in the chat box for you because I don't remember anything off the top of my head right now, but you don't have to go through NNA. You can definitely go through your state. Some states require that you apply through like your secretary of state. Thank you, Ms. Brown, secretary of state. Um, some states you have to go through a courthouse. It depends on where you are. Awesome, thank you for the information. Thank you. Any other questions, guys? Any other questions? Um, my tip for you guys, I'll, I have a quick tax tip for everyone that, received uh let's, let's say hold on lucky four says how much for the boot camp uh a marlin says can you make money in north carolina yes you can make money in any state you can make money in any state it all depends on how you structure your business like you can make money in any state whatsoever i don't i don't it doesn't matter what your fee is or what it is that you're charging or whatever you can make money in any state um, the boot camp, how much for the boot camp, um, for the new boot camp, we kind of have right now, the boot camp program that we are running was 500, um, and it was, uh, 12 weeks. So I'm not sure what the next one will be yet because we're revamping and adding a little bit more to it. Well, not a little bit, a lot more <laughs> to it. So as soon as we have that information, I'll definitely be posting that as well. Um, uh, let's see. Can you make money in North Carolina? Okay, I'll just check in my chat box. So any other questions, guys, before I give this tax tip for anyone who receives unemployment benefits? Anyone that, um, any other questions whatsoever? 
All right, so I'm going to give a, a quick tax tip. If you put a, if you have a question, just drop it down in the, tax, in the chat box. Sorry. So a quick tax tip for anyone who receives unemployment compensation. I want you to actually go look at your um, your year, the year to date amount that you received in unemployment. If you received unemployment compensation, look at the year to date that you received to see what is the gross amount. And take a look at it to see whether or not they were withholding federal taxes from your unemployment benefits. Because in most states, unemployment benefits are taxable on a state level and unemployment benefits are also taxable on a federal level. So please, please, please check to see if you have been paying federal taxes, especially federal taxes, out of your unemployment benefits. Um, if you were, if you lost your job um, during the pandemic or anything like that, please expect changes in your refund. The change can mean that you have lower income, so you might end up with a higher refund or a lower balance or no balance owed. If you are receiving a lower income, the change can also mean you receive a lower refund because your income is too low for you to qualify for certain credits or it's for you to max out on certain credits. So I want you guys to just be prepared um, this tax season. For all of you that are small business owners, you want to keep you want to keep um, track of your expenses, especially now. Any advice for staying through? Uh, hold on, let me go back to that one. Any advice for staying sane through the holidays with <laughs> your business? <laughs> Uh, I will definitely give you some advice on how to stay sane. <laughs> but, but yes, um, it's a hard task. But yes, yes, you you definitely want to stay sane. <laughs> I want you guys to go into the tax season with an open mind. Small business owners, track your expenses. Track your losses. If you're a person that have a store or if you bought items that were for sale and they didn't sell because of the pandemic, if your store was destroyed during like a riot when they had protests and things like that, make sure you document that. Make sure you write down all that information because that may be helpful to you as well during the tax season. Now, how to stay sane. How to stay sane through the holidays with business is take things one day at a time. One day at a time. You just need to make it through one day at a time. You're only one you, one day at a time. Don't try to, oh my gosh, like, what are we going to do two weeks from now, three weeks from now, five weeks from now? No, you need to take it one day at a time. Exactly, Thomasina, you have to focus, stay focused, and do not let yesterday's, don't bring yesterday's drama into today, don't drive today's drama into tomorrow. You have to take it one step at a time. So if you didn't get any clients yesterday, you want to analyze what did I do yesterday? What could I have done differently? And apply those today. You just need to get through one day at a time. That's it. One step at a time, one day at a time. Don't go crazy thinking, oh my God, I have two more months. No, focus all your energy. Give it your all because right now, whether you guys believe it or not, people are still spending money. People are still shopping, especially now around the holiday season. People are still eating now more than ever, especially me. For example, like you, sometimes you get stressed, you, you just start eating a snack. It's a whole pandemic outside. So also, as a small business owner, you have to practice self-care. There must be a time when you relax, rejuvenate, and just release the stress and the drama of that particular day. You have to take a break sometimes. Now, I'm not saying to take a vacation for three weeks and come back and you have nothing. I'm saying if you need a day or so, take a day, breathe, relax, you know, get some good sleep, go back to the drawing board the next day and just knock everything out, right? Strategize, make sure you are maximizing on marketing because that is going to be a big thing. Remember, a lot of people are at home. Digital marketing is definitely a way to go. Social media, everybody is on there. So you definitely want to choose to market in those, those areas because there's a lot of people watching. Um, Ms. Brown says, being a small business, you have to keep track of business expenses and you have to 
file a Schedule C on taxes. Is that topic? Is that a topic you will speak on maybe on the future? Um, as it gets closer to tax season, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to actually be doing live videos and providing different tax tips on different subjects um, like credit deductions, things like that. I'll give you different tips on things that can help you as far as like, you know, your taxes are concerned. Small business owners, especially our company does uh, specialize in small business taxes. So, yes, definitely, Miss Brown. Any other questions, guys? So for my people who are business owners that are a little stressed and just want to stay sane, take some time. Take it one day at a time. Do not go crazy. Just, just take it one day at a time. Uh, Ms. Williams says, hi, one of my concerns with being an LSA is time. I'm available. I can work Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 5. Not sure if I'm, if I'll be busy as I would, as I would like. Um, to be honest, Ms. Williams, um, 8.30 to 5 p.m. is a really good time. To be honest with you, um, Monday through Friday for me is probably my only um, critique is I would say to what about the weekends? Are you are you available on Saturdays and Sundays? Because a lot of people want to schedule loan closings around time that is flexible for them. You know, that works for them. So most people are working nine to five jobs, you know, and they want to schedule loan closings around times where they they're not working. The good thing is a lot of people are working from home. So 830 to five, I don't think that's an issue. Five is a little early for me. I would personally, I would say um, I'd rather go like a 10 to seven or, you know, something like that rather than an eight to five. Five is kind of early for everyone, especially when daylight saving time, but the daylight saving time, five sometimes in Florida, especially there's still a hot sun outside <laughs> and still in the, in the summer and in the springtime, there's still a hot beaming sun at 5 p.m. Nobody's going anywhere at 5 p.m. They're still awake, alive, and allowed at 5 p.m. There's no darkness coming anytime soon. Darkness usually falls around 8, maybe around 7.45-ish. So the 5 p.m. part of it, I would say, would be, you know, I, I would give that push that a little further um, if you want to start a little later but you're in I think you will be busy um, I would just do some research on your area um, depending on where you live to see what it's like there if you live in an area where you see a lot of real estate a lot of developments it's very it's well populated it might be a busy busy area um, if you're in a rural area you might know this it might just work for you because, you know, some people, they just don't transact business after a certain time. They get used to going to the bank or going to other places and they close by 5 p.m. and they're OK with that. So, um, yes, the only thing I would say is maybe adding some weekends and pushing that five to maybe around seven. Um, and, but I think you won't have a problem. Um, just do a little research in your area to see what the people in your area like to do. And my loan signing agent, please stay safe when you go out to do these signings. Remember, there's still a full-blown pandemic. Please follow CDC guidelines, social distance, wear a mask to stay safe, all right? So, guys, um, any other questions for me, guys? I'm getting antsy now, so I'm just picking up my phone and stuff. <laughs> Oh, congratulations, Miss Williams. She said, I have a three-month-old. I'm in Dallas, Texas. Texas is a busy place. Texas is like almost, Texas is like Florida <laughs> a little bit. So trust me, you'll be busy, busy in Texas. I have about seven people that are in Texas right now. Yes, Texas is busy. And um, yeah. <laughs> that's pretty much it but there's a lot of people in texas have you considered doing remote notary you can also try to do remote closings as well you can do that <gasps> she said oh my oldest is 14 she wasn't surprised. <laughs> the surprises always get you <laughs> trust me i have a gap myself i have like 18 and 14 and 6 there is seven. So, oh yeah, I have a gap myself. So yeah, but my gap is not as big as yours. Fourteen, and then the three month old. That's a huge gap. That's starting 
all over again. Oh my God, I, I pray for your strength. I pray for your strength. You'll be okay. You can do it. You've done it before. You've raised a whole human for 14 years. You can definitely do it. And one of the good things about being a notary signing agent is that you get to set your own hours. So you get to spend a lot of time with your baby. That is one of the things I love, love, love is that I get to spend time with my family. So yes, definitely. Uh, Ms. Brown said, good information. I wondered if I would have enough work as a notary in South Carolina. Um, she said, this has helped to encourage me. Yes, definitely. Guys, let me tell you, a lot of people are sleeping. I'm telling you on notary, they are. Uh, Ms. Williams says, yes, I have. I need that remote notary training. Yes, you do that. That might work. You know, aside from when the baby decides, hey, it's time for food. <laughs> and then you may have to hit your mute button or something. The baby starts crying. But listen, there's even people like right now, everybody understands everybody's working from home. So if you have like draw, as long as you don't have a lot of noise and real ruckus going on in the background, people understand. People are getting used to hearing cats and dogs and people conversating in the background. It's no longer weird. <laughs> it's just the new normal for us. So remote online notary or remote uh, signings would be awesome. Um, especially for you as a new mom. So I would definitely recommend to do some research and get into that. And if you ever need mentoring, go ahead and just, you know, stop by sbntgroup.com and go to mentorship and um, I'll be more than happy to mentor you. Um, South Carolina is right down the street from me. <laughs> yeah. Ms. Brown, right down the street. So don't worry, you'll be just fine. You just pace yourself and just keep taking it one step at a time, one step at a time you will be absolutely fine. So anyways, guys, I'm going to um, going to sign off for now and I will see you guys. As I mentioned, as tax season is approaching, I will be doing some ta tax tips for you guys. Um, Ms. Brown says, I will be doing notary after the tax course. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Because I'm telling you guys, here I go again. Combining, adding services to your... Um, you know, adding services to your businesses is how you do it. You know, you might start off with notary. You might want to add tax. You might want to add credit repair. You want to, you might want to add fingerprinting. You might want to add, um, like a courier service. You might, there's a lot of things you can add. So you just want to start somewhere. You just want to master one thing before you go into 50 things. You want to have 50 things that you're in a, you're, you're still a, apprentice you don't know what you're doing or you don't understand what's going on you're not there yet you haven't mastered it yet so you want to um, make sure that you master one skill first and then you start taking on new ones all right so anyways guys give this video a lovely thumbs up for me thank you guys so much for tuning in I know this is not the scheduled video and I actually had some trouble getting my life started and I was very, very tired, but I decided, you know what, I have to come in and check in with my people because I haven't seen them in a long time. But guys, I'll be coming with tax tips. Now, my tax tips are not going to be a long, you know, you know, like video like this, but I'll be dropping different tax tips uh, for you guys every week and information. I know a lot of people are excited. I, there is some information about stimulus um, that is floating around inside the tax world. And I will give you guys some details on that as well as soon as I get confirmation. You're welcome, Demetri. You're welcome, Thomas Christina. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Don't forget, if you're not yet a member of our family, please go ahead and subscribe. Turn on your notification alerts so that you will know when I am live or when we post new content to the channel. If you're interested in mentoring, please visit sbntgroup.com. You can also go to the main channel page and the link is right up where you see my lovely picture. You can click on mentorship. You can also visit the partner site, which is kobecansolutions.com. Um, if you need help, we will be also training on Kobe Can Solutions. We will be training uh, people how to do fingerprinting. That is another uh, industry that is rapidly growing that can produce really, really good um, income. So we will, that is another class that is to come for you guys. So if you're interested in any of these things, feel free to contact us. Visit sbntgroup.com or kobecansolutions.com. All right. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I will see you guys next time. Don't forget to wear your mask. Stay safe. And as always, don't forget. Don't absolutely do not forget 
to give this video a thumbs up before you leave. <laughs> All right, guys. See you guys later. You guys have a good night.